Welcome to this lesson on how to calculate your market size. Calculating market size is an essential first step in determining your market share, and thus one of the building blocks of a coherent marketing or business development strategy. So let's get started. When launching a new product, diversifying your offering, or expanding into new regions, knowing your market potential before you invest time and money is vital. Calculating market size uses informed estimations to determine the potential market volume and sales revenue. Calculating market size matters for several reasons. Here's why. It allows organizations to estimate potential profit from a new product, service, or business. Understanding market size helps investors decide whether to invest in a business or not. And finally, it aids the development of an effective marketing strategy by highlighting the needs and the potential of a core market. In this lesson, we will look at ways to calculate your market size and how you can use this to inform your business development planning. The first and perhaps most important step in this process is to define our market. Don't skip ahead. It is really important to get this step right. Let's start with three basic market definition questions. Question 1. Who's the buyer? Who is your product suited to? Question 2. Who's the user? Yes, it can be different from the buyer. And question 3. What is the scope of my market, geographically and or demographically? The next consideration is to understand what we mean by a target market. In this respect, there are three important concepts. The TAM, or Total Addressable Market. The SAM, or Total Serviceable Available Market. And the SOM, the Total Serviceable, Obtainable Market, or Market Share. Let's look briefly at each of these. TAM looks at the entire potential value of the overall market. Think for example, of the total value for toothbrush sales in the United States in a given year. You calculate the TAM by adding up all product sales across the market. There are two ways of doing this. The first way is to add up figures for toothbrush sales per grocery chain, pharmacy, and retailer. The second way is to estimate how many toothbrushes the average person buys, multiply that by the number of people in the United States and then by the average cost of a toothbrush. The next concept is SAM. SAM refers to the specific potential audience for your product or offering. Staying with our toothbrush example, the total value of sales of online-only electric toothbrushes for kids. This would be the maximum market value of your company based on this target market. To calculate SAM, add up all the relevant product sales across the market, so, add up figures for online purchases of electric toothbrushes for kids. And the third concept here is SOM. SOM, also known as share of market, is a representation of the proportion of your SAM that you're likely to obtain for your company. Assuming you're not the only children's toothbrush manufacturer in the market, that number will be smaller than the SAM. To calculate SOM, divide last year's revenue by last year's SAM. This is your market share. Now multiply your market share by the dollar value SAM for this year. There are two approaches to market sizing, top-down and bottom-up. The first is a top-down approach, in which you start by looking at the market as a whole, from a bird's-eye view, then refine it to get an accurate market size. A bottom-up approach is the exact opposite, starting small and working your way outward. This looks first at identifying the number of units you can expect to sell, then considering how many sales you anticipate from each buyer, and finally the average price per unit. Neither gives you the complete picture, so it's important to understand and use both approaches. Top-down market sizing looks at the whole market, taking a macro view of potential revenue and customers. Starting with the largest number, and then refining according to realistic estimations of a target market. A top-down approach to market sizing is used to ascertain your serviceable obtainable market, the SAM. Bottom-up market sizing starts small, then gradually gets built up. Firstly, you identify the segments you intend to reach. 
Then, estimations are made using assumptions and market research to establish growth and size. Essentially, bottom-up market sizing looks at where a product or service can be sold, the sales of comparable products, and the portion of current sales in the market that you can go after. Here is a worked example. Let's say you want to launch a wine company. First, you'd want to determine how many liquor stores are in the United States. This helps you figure out the total market to which you could theoretically sell your product. After your research, you discover there are 50,000 liquor stores in the United States. Of that total list, you only want to sell to the New England area, including Massachusetts, Maine, and Rhode Island. You determine your target market includes the 1,000 liquor stores in the New England area. From here, you conduct research and speak with alcohol distributors to determine there's a roughly 40% success rate for wine distribution. Using this as an example, we'd calculate the market size using the following formula. 1,000 liquor stores times 40% equals 400 liquor stores. Then, if you assume each liquor store will result in $20,000, you can figure out potential revenue using the following formula. 400 liquor stores times $20,000 equals $8 million. This means you stand to make $8 million if you penetrate 40% of the total market in the New England area. Now let's try a bottom-up approach. Using the same wine example, say you found recent data showing that the average cost of a wine bottle in New England is $10. A survey shows that the average consumer buys one bottle of wine a week, or 48 bottles a year. This means that the average consumer spends $480 per year on wine. Next, you discover that the number of consumers, or households, you can expect to reach in the New England area, is 16,000. As a result, your market size is 480x16,000 which equals $8 million. It's important to note that both methods ignore the existence of competitors, customer churn rate, and other factors that impact sales. With this in mind, you'll want to remain conservative when estimating how much of the market size you'll win, and use this as a starting point. So which approach is better? The top-down approach is supplier-based, and is the approach used most often by research firms. This approach is typically based on a series of competitive interviews, where each competitor is asked for an estimate of the market size. These estimates are sometimes weighted, and then averaged for the market size calculation. On this basis, you can calculate your addressable market. A bottom-up approach to TAM calculation tends to be more accurate, as it calculates estimated potential sales of a product or service, and where possible, pulls from your existing sales history. In its simplest form, a bottoms-up TAM calculation takes the number of potential accounts, and multiplies it by the annual price of your product or service. Of the top-down and bottom-up methods, the bottom-up approach is far more time-consuming, but is more accurate. In essence, it uses a series of interviews with all suppliers to determine quantities sold by each company in the period. These are added together to give the total market size. Here are some tools you can use to locate market size data. Primary and secondary research, Start reading online and find external resources that give information about a market. These can come in the form of articles, case studies, white papers, product launch announcements, and more. Financial reports. Public companies have to release their financial reports to the public. Capitalize on this information to see what the market looks like and specific competitors' business plans. Market research tools. Market research comes in many shapes and forms. You can pay a company to create a one-off report or use on-demand resources with access to dynamic market insights. Interviews and in-person visits, talk to people in the industry to get a sense of how they see market potential, customers, and challenges. This can include studying customer segments and analyzing audience demographics. Put it all together, Look at the figures and group all your information together to see if it all makes sense. If you have calculated a TAM of $1 billion, but conversations with business owners in the space point to half that, 
try to spot where your estimations may have skewed, and adjust the TAMSAM and SOM accordingly. Market size is one of the fundamental measurements that must be taken before you develop your marketing strategy. For example, expenses for an R&D project should be related to market size. The same is true for sales force and marketing expenses. On the one hand, you do not want to overinvest based on market size. On the other hand, you do not want to underinvest in large, fast-moving markets. Market share data can also tell us if your share of the market is growing or declining. In the next lesson, we will look at how to acquire and make best use of market share data. Want to learn more about this subject? Then click on our website to view the full course. Why not subscribe and get access to free articles and special offers? Join the global career highway now.